Hello, this is The Watchdog, and welcome back to Fun With Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Pagani Design PDYS-012. Let's start with the wrist check. I'm wearing this Major 2002, and Greg was wearing my Tylus 180-96. Greg said a guild highliner appeared above Tatooine and dropped off former Emperor Shaddam IV at the Moss Eisley Cantina. He got drunk and started singing, I'm Shaddam the Fourth, I am, Shaddam the Fourth, I am, I am. I am married to Reverend Mother, therefore the house of Crino is no more. All right, let's take a look at the watch. Comes in this typical Pagani design box. And I know you've all seen my unboxing video, so I won't go over the contents. And here it is. It's orange. This is my second Pagani Design Richard Mill homage. The last one, the PD-1738, also had a Seiko Group fast sweeping quartz movement, but it was a VH-65 that has a day of the month subdial that was barely readable on the fake skeleton dial. This PDYS-012 ups the game by including the VH-88 that also adds a 24-hour subdial and a day of the week subdial. I don't know what it is about these Seiko fast ticking quartz movements, but none of them seem to have a traditional date wheel. Maybe that takes up too much battery. Richard Mill watches are big, bold, and in your face, and so was the PD-1738. This PD-YS-012 is a little bit more subtle, as it is a millimeter smaller in the length and the width, plus a whopping 3.5 millimeters smaller in the height, relieving it of much unnecessary chunkiness. This watch comes in four different colorways, black, light blue, green, and orange, with each color difference consisting of a rehot chapter ring, crown, second hand, and matching strap. The black has a red second hand. I chose the orange because I chose the blue for the PD-1738. I wanted to mix it up for review purposes. If I was buying it for myself, I would have chose the blue. The watch isn't traditionally shaped, so the measurements are kind of off the charts or not typical. But anyway, it's 40.5 millimeters if you measure at the widest part of the bezel. It's 48.8 millimeters long. You can't really call it lug to lug. And it's only 12 millimeters thick. Once again, the last one was 15 and a half millimeters thick. So this is severely thinner than the last one. Uh, no lug width because of the integrated bracelet, but it's 26 millimeters where the strap meets the bracelet and weighs 109 grams on the supplied silicone strap. Then we have the bezel. The bezel is brushed. And it has all these screws in it to hold it on. And they look like real screws. I don't think they're just engravings in the bezel. But I'm not going to actually remove one to test it. Because then I would probably lose it in the carpet. As I've done many times before. And then we have the dial. We have the Rehot chapter ring with the minute markers and the minute counters. And then we have the indices just right next to the chapter ring. And they're just these little tiny triangles, not very big at all. And then we have the hands. We have skeleton dauphine hands. And they're with loomed halves of them. The loom isn't that good. You'll see later. Then we have a orange second hand and each colorway matches their second hand except for the black the black has a red one for some reason maybe because the black would have just been too hard to see and then we have the dial the dial is a fake skeleton all these little gears and stuff are fake because this is a quartz watch not an automatic and then we have the subdials. The one top right is the day of the month, and it's really hard to read. I can't read it very well at all. And then on the bottom, we have a 24 hour subdial. And as you can see, it has a blue arrow tip. I'm not, I guess uh, it was too, they didn't make it orange. And then here we have a day of the week indicator. It shows that it's Saturday. The crown is a push-pull signed, and it has a little orange silicone grip. And, of course, the other colors 
match. It's only uh, 50 meters water resistance, so you just get a push pull. You don't get a screw down. I've never had an issue with these Seiko VH movements and minute hand jump. Then you do have quick set day of the month, but you don't have quick set day of the week. So if you need to change the day of the week, you have to do it the hard way. You have to go all the way around. So let's do that. As you can see, we're going to cross the 12 hour really soon. All right, so we're crossing the 12 hour and see it jumped to Sunday. So yeah, now the nice thing though is you only have to do that once because the day of the week never shifts. Unlike the day of the month where you have short months where you do have to change the date. You know, once you set the day, you never will have to change it. Of course, unless you change the battery. Then we have a sapphire crystal. I tested it just to make sure. And I don't know if there's AR coating or not, but the reflection doesn't seem too bad. And then we have the case. The case is your Richard Mill style case and it's stainless steel. And once again, it's not near as thick as the one on the 1738. And then we have the case back. The case back is held on by four tiny screws. Because how else would you do it? it says Pagani Design up top. Sapphire stainless steel back. Ooh, stainless steel back. I wonder if that means that the rest of it is not. I don't know. It looks like stainless steel, but maybe it's not. Then it gives the 5 ATM water resistance and PDYS 012. Underneath the case back is the VH88 movement. This is a fast sweeping quartz movement that ticks four times a second. And I already went over the other features, which is the day of the month wheel, the 24 hour wheel, and the day of the week indicator. And I don't know what it is about these fast sweeping Seiko VH movements, but they never seem to have a traditional date wheel. You have the VH31 with no date, then you have the VH65 with the, just the day of the month wheel, and then you have this one. And supposedly the batteries only last two years because of the fast tick. But it should be easy enough to change. Batteries are cheap. And at least it's not a prion. The strap is silicone. And it's got these little vents here for sweat. And then you got plenty of notches and they're close together so you can get a good fit. Then you have two keepers, one fixed, one floating. The uh, fixed ones with these little nibs on the strap. And they they work pretty good. Some of them, I've seen ones before where they don't hold it hardly at all. But this one's good. And then we have a nice buckle. It's signed. Plenty sturdy. The prong's not all floppy. So I like the, I like the strap. Here's the watch on my 7.5 inch wrist. It looks nice, it wears nice, and once again, not near as chunky as the PD-1738 Richard Mill homage. And I have five notches left, so you can wear this if you have a big wrist. But I only have three notches going in, so if your wrist is really small, you might want to pass on this one. Here we are in the loom room. Pagani Design rarely has good loom in their dive watches, let alone a non-dive watch. I'm not expecting much. Plus, just wearing the watch gave me no indication that it would be more than adequate. As we speed up the time, we see that only the indices and major hands are loomed. It starts out with a decent blue glow of BGW9, but there's not much longevity and everything is fading fast. And unfortunately, the hands are weaker than the indices. 
What do I like about this watch? Well, it looks and wears nice. The strap is plenty long, and it's not near as chunky as the PD1738. What are my grapes and groans? I can hardly read the date. I don't like uh, fake skeleton dials. I wish they would just get rid of all these gears. I don't mind the little lines and stuff, but fake gears just kind of irritate me. It would have been nice if the loom was a little bit better. Do I recommend this watch? Sure. This looks a lot like a Richard Mill, but without having to sell a kidney to afford it. Of course, this is only for those who like the looks of a Richard Mill. If a Richard Mill is not your thing, then this won't win you over. Well, thank you for watching my review of the Pagani Design PDYS012, and I will be back with an unboxing. I have three watches from AliExpress, and one's going to be a really good one. Be sure and like and subscribe to my channel, and if you like this watch, be sure to use my affiliate link, and I'll get a small commission. And be sure to check out my member's choice. Bye.